Okay, I think we can get going. So uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Supercharge Your ERP Applications with Intelligent Automation. So my name is John Collett and I am the Sales Director at Will Winfo Solutions. I'll be your host today and I'm delighted to welcome you all. Thank you for joining. Also on the call today, we have the pleasure of Damien Hume from New Farm, who is a global process owner. And we also have Dinesh Kanuga, a director and senior solutions manager at Winfo Solutions. So I'll just let Dinesh catch up with the slides. <laughs> That's perfect. So we're on the good one. Thanks, Dinesh. Sorry about that. So firstly, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to attend what I believe will be an informative and productive short webinar. We really do appreciate you finding the time for us in your schedule today, and I'm sure you'll find it informative and of great interest. By the way, we hold these webinars monthly, so be sure to look out for the next one in the new year. So let me run through a few housekeeping points to begin with to ensure that everything runs smoothly. To confirm, the webinar is being recorded today. All of you will have your microphones muted. From our side, you will be able to see and hear each of the participants. The webinar recording will be made available via link to you at the end of the session. So if we move to the next slide, Dinesh, thanks. So Winfo Solutions has significant experience in Oracle applications and Winfo Bots has been developed and based around the challenges our customers were facing to key processes uh, uh, and um, automation. So for instance, like procure to pay, order to cash projects and record to, re and record to report. But we will be very uh, interested also to understand the challenges that you may be facing that we might not mention today. So please feel free to put those in the chat and or mention them at the end in the Q&A session. So in this webinar, we're going to provide a high level uh, overview of Winfo Solutions in terms of who we are. And Dinesh will set the scene on navigating ERP challenges and why process automation is so key and discuss the key features and benefits. And that'll be followed by a live demo to see it in action. And also, again, we're very grateful to Damien from New Farm, who's going to run through his customer experience and use of, uh, uh, of case studies of process automation at New Farm, which will be very interesting. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will do our best to answer them by the end of the session. So if we can move to the next slide, Dinesh. So I'm just gonna briefly provide an overview of Winfo Solutions. So Winfo was founded in 2015 by Oracle experts who have many years experience and a very deep understanding of Oracle ERP. And in actual fact, Winfo has over 70 qualified accountants in the business with over 300 experts employed by Winfo across the globe. And that's in Hyderabad, India, the UK, Ireland and the USA, supporting many customers in those geographies and more. Our uh, core capabilities are enterprise transformation. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it means from our perspective, helping organizations to be more efficient through our implementation services. So customer success is key to everything we do here at Winfo. We also have a very strong capability implementing automated testing through our tool Winfo Test. But today we're gonna to be focused on, on business process automation and Winfo bots, which is there really to drive efficiencies. And it's through our deep experience that we've developed Winfo bots for process automation, uh, really to increase governance, save time and money and automate many mundane tasks, enabling staff to do more productive and innovative work. So I'm now going to hand over to Dinesh to go through why process automation and cover some of the challenges that are faced. So over to you, Dinesh. Thanks, John. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, uh, joining us on this particular webinar. I'm just going to uh, give a little bit of context uh, in and around uh, automation, why automation is important for uh, 
many organizations across industries, uh, across geographies as such. Now, typically organizations, when you do, uh, they look in terms of their finance and business resources, along with IT, in terms of large part of their effort goes in terms of transaction processing, whether it's in processing journals or um, transactions across various subledgers, uh, or in terms of when it comes to month end, in terms of closing the subledgers or in general ledger, um, basic reporting, uh, basic analytics skills, and if there are any uh, gap specific uh, reporting requirements as such. But what when we started to look at this particular whole pyramid, our whole objective was that how do we reverse this particular pyramid that we reduce all the activities which are more from a transaction processing, if those can be activities which can be automated and provide more time for businesses to focus on their reporting and also in terms of how finance can then become an enabler from a business decision support perspective. So they become more forward and uh, um, forward looking and become strategic partners to the business functions as such. So that was the idea that we started with respect to why organizations need to consider automations from their perspective as such. Now, when we look at this particular pyramid, what we started to do is a look at all across various functions, whether organizations are within uh, embedded business operations or in-house shared services or outshore shared services, which particular processes are good from an automation perspective or high potential from an automation perspective. Now, irrespective of organizations where you are, master data maintenance, vendor management, uh, travel and expense processing, onboarding of employees, uh, man critical management reporting, month end, are processes which any organization has to perform. And if you are global organizations such as New Farm, where you will go to hear from uh, Damien uh, in, in a short while, those particular processes become repeatable, quite manual, uh, uh, and, lab, uh, and, and uh, prone to errors as such. So these are the processes which uh, we considered. Can we look at a, a model where we can define automated and prepackaged auto, uh, automations around these specific processes as such? That's the whole philosophy in terms of looking at the business process, reducing the time for find resources underneath each of these particular pillars, their time, and these particular processes, which uh, which brought us to developing something as WinfoBots. WinfoBots is something which allows you to supercharge your ERP applications with intelligent automation. What do I mean by it is that we have developed a command center based approach to uh, obviously orchestrate pro uh, pro autumn processes. These are predefined automations across various functions from a back office perspective. So when they look at procure to pay, vendor management, invoice creation, invoice management, expense report management, order to cash, your customer receipts processing, uh, sales order creations, et cetera, projects, looking at project master data management, project and contract close, record to report, your journal creation, month and creation, month and close processes, budgeting and forecasting, intercompany reconciliation. So each of the processes which you saw on the previous slide, what we have done is uh, based on our experience of working across different industries uh, and different uh, uh, geographies as well, we have tried to define the processes and we have pre-built automations. Now, what it means for organizations is that you could quickly jumpstart your automation journey by using our product and plugging in these particular offerings and uh, you can uh, pretty much jumpstart your automation. Uh, you, it is more of a configuration rather than as a customization. I'll come to the product demo in a, in a short while, but before I go on to it, I just like to call out key features of WinfoBots, which we've tried to focus on and I'll try to bring to life some of them as well. A is obviously the fact that it's got pre-built and packaged automations. When I mean that, what I mean by that is that the processes which you saw on the previous slide are all pre-built. You can just plug and play into your environment by using configuration rather than 
going through a, a consulting kind of an engagement where you uh, define the process, uh, document it first, then obviously uh, build that particular process and do go to a full software development lifecycle. You can directly go on to configuring it and getting on to test. It has a command center view, which means it gives you a full dashboard view of all the activity which a robot is performing. Quite at times, organizations, when they are looking at an RPA, saying that, it's a, is it a sophisticated macro? I, am I going to know what the robot is doing in the background? But that's where we looked at it in saying that, you know, how can we bring a dashboard which finance controllers, which IT, and which business can start interacting with and can see what the robots are doing in the background. It's a complete SaaS based solution. So it uh, is hosted on a complete SaaS based solution in, within the geographies of where customers are. And uh, it's a, uh, it allows 24 by seven process automations. As they say, each robot is equal to three FTEs. So the processes are something which can run in the background, can be scheduled and it helps you leverage uh, com completely processes across all the uh, time zones. It provides detailed audit log of what actions the robots have performed. It allows you to orchestrate your fill business process. Uh, we have enabled AI powered features into the product. As I mentioned again, it's configuration rather than customization. It allows you real time dashboards, analytics and alerts, integrates with your ERP, can work across various other applications and last but not the least is data security, which is of paramount importance to us to ensure that the application has a complete uh, security at all layers, whether it's with respect to access controls, whether it's with respect to uh, 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 infrastructure security, and also ensuring that no data is resides within the application and whatever data is there, it can be segregated by role-based security as such. Now, with that in uh, point, I'm going to swiftly move over to a demo of WinfoBots. I'm going to uh, switch over to uh, my browser. And if you can see here, this is our, uh, let me sign in again. We got a single sign-on enabled. So I'm going to log on directly using the single sign-on to the landing page. Now, this is our landing page. And as I said, uh, you know, we've got various automations which are across various business functions. And here, I am able to quickly go on to any specific part of the automation. What it does is that, you know, based on the role-based security, I can quickly, one, uh, based on the role-based security, I would have access to only certain functions in terms of where I sit within the organization. As I said. So if I'm responsible to record to report as a uh, global process owner, I'll get access to a specific function. If I am a financial controller who is responsible for all areas, then I will get access to all parts of the application. So as you could see, you've got various automations which are packaged, which are available within your organization, which you can kick quickly onboard as such. What I would like to show you are a few things. So for example, if you look at a record to report, if you're looking at a period close assistant, you've got this record launch period close activity through which you can select your period close launch you can identify your specific ledger. You can give a period which you would like to interact with and specify a, a priority and submit it. So all it does is that it provides you a front end to interact with your robots. It's no longer it's no longer a, a, a automation which is a faceless as such, right? So you know you've got an ability to interact with your robots, and as you can see that you can also see how the automations are working on. So if I were to go back to the home screen, I can also look the period close monitor in terms of how many processes are running in the background. What is the status of that particular process? So this one is in queue, this one is completed. So if I look at the completed process, it says that it started weekday minus five. What are the processes which were run? Uh, from, I started with opening the accounting period, opening the uh, in general ledger, opening the accounting period in payables, uh, validating the invoices, creating the accounting, subledger period close report. And with every status when it runs, it provides you the request ID within your ERP so that you can always audit trail what those particular processes were. It also captures the full log of when that particular process was run, uh, when it was completed, 
and all these particular reports which are run are also saved on your SharePoint as well. So from a data security perspective, uh, it recites no information uh, from a transactional perspective. It All that information is held within your, uh, as, as defined uh, by working along with you. Now, if I, what I would also like to show you uh, is with respect to, if I were to go back in terms of the overall homepage, I would like to also like to show you the live dashboard. So which is what's the command center kind of a view, which I would like to showcase with you is that it shows you if you are a within a shared services team or within the finance uh, team, you can see that you know, it shows you the live dashboard of all the activities which are happening in the background. At, at, and at any particular point of view, you can query transactions as they are uh, pro being processed and as the robots which are deployed into your business function processing the transaction. So this is what I meant in terms of real-time analytics, real-time dashboards, and kind of a command center kind of a view. If you are resp uh, responsible for certain functions, you might be interested in saying how many supplier headers did we receive today, how many suppliers, banks, account addresses, etc. got created today. And you can interrogate uh, uh, using your entire application using these particular landing page as such. Now, with that in mind, I will go back to my presentation slides in terms of calling out uh, that these are the features which we have tried to demonstrate in terms of it's a pre-built and pre-packaged application with a command center kind of a view. It's completely SaaS based. Uh, it orchestrates your business process. It's configuration rather than customization, where, which allows you to quickly onboard these particular processes within your business function. Now, looking at it, what are the benefits, right? Now, you, you may ask us that this is fine. Process automation by default gives you this particular thing. But where does WinfoBot stand um, within the normal process automation? Your normal process automation is supposed to provide you increased efficiency, save time, reducing manual activities, uh, obviously, as a result of it, en uh, uh, enhancing your accuracy and reliability, reducing the cost, uh, and obviously, your risk also gets reduced and focus on the business critical activities. Where WinfoBot scores against a generic RPA kind of a framework is that you got pre-built and packaged automations, which means that on day one, uh, you can start looking at automations which we have within our repository and see what is the most the process which is most applicable to your organization, and you can jumpstart your automation journey. You don't really need to uh, wait to define how do I need to, which particular process do I need to select, define the process as such. We have done that particular uh, heavy lifting and you can look at uh, directly starting with respect to automation. It's a business friendly application, which I just demonstrated where you're able to see uh, uh, what the robots are, what the processes are, and you can send an instruction or a command line to a robot to say that start a specific activity. All that means is that it results in a faster ROI realization, which means, you know, uh, with, within an org, certain organization which you are working for, you know, an automated invoice processing function directly means that in, you can bring the processes to life within three to four months, which effectively means that the overall investment in a, in a RPA kind of a framework or Minfobots pays back within 12 months time as such in an overall scheme of things where you get process efficiency, a process cost savings, et cetera. As I mentioned, it has complete audit trail of activities. No longer you're dependent on IT to tell you what actions it has performed. It has got information dashboards, which provides a view of full end-to-end -end process flow. And it's a configuration uh, rather than, uh, uh, um, rather than uh, customization uh, for full blown. And we have a dedicated customer support as well, which allows you to, um, to resolve any issues as you encounter using the automations as such. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to quickly ask Damien to uh, talk through their journey with respect to automations using WinfoBots. Damien, if I could please invite you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome, everybody, um, and thank you very much for the opportunity to share the good news that we experienced at uh, New Farm uh, in, in delivering or bringing uh, 
the first uh, robot uh, programs to our business, um, which I have to say was a, a, a very pleasant um, surprise on how efficient, how effective uh, the whole program was. Uh, would you like to just go on to the next slide? So New Farm itself, we're a global uh, agrichem company. Uh, we produce um, both chemicals and seeds that are used. Some of you will be familiar with them uh, in, 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 from your local garden center for killing weeds. Uh, but we do some very, very scientific stuff for very specific puffs all around the world. Um, we're also developing molecules um, and innovation. So, for example, uh, we have a contract with um, uh, BP, the uh, uh, petrol, sorry, the uh, fuel company, developing uh, plant or uh, biofuel specifically for aircraft. So these are things that we're looking at, plus um, things like um, uh, crops that produce uh, omega, omega-3, uh, which you get from fish normally. So instead of fishing, uh, farm fishing, you can grow it out of the ground. Uh, currently, 3.8 billion turnover, uh, over 2,500 employees, over 100 countries. Uh, primarily sales operations in, in most of those countries, um, but uh, uh, we have multiple manufacturing plants around the world as well. In, in Europe, we have three manufacturing plants uh, based in France, Austria, and the UK. And we had, we've got 18 countries, sorry, if you could go on to the next slide, please. So we've, we've got uh, 15 sales entities and three manufacturing plants around the UK, around Europe rather. And every one of those have to do their month end closing all at the same time, because we're one company. Um, what that actually meant before all of this was huge teams working lots of hours with many mistakes to go through what, as you can see there, our, our, our program of uh, month end closing, uh, some 154 actions per business as a minimum. Um, just to, just to, these are steps, uh, reports, analysis, reconciliation, etc. Um, and it's a very, very tough program. Um, and typically, uh, certainly um, in the middle part of that program, uh, the, the teams are working till, or we're working till 11, 12 o'clock at night on many occasions uh, to get the month end completed. This had a knock on effect with things like uh, um, people leaving, uh, they get fed up of it. Uh, if you know every month at the month end, you potentially are gonna be working till 11, 12 o'clock at night. Uh, for two, maybe three nights uh, in a week. Uh, it's not something to look forward to. Uh, and they tend to look to not do it uh, in the end. So we, we, we recognise the challenge. How do we actually get this to be uh, as automated as it possibly can be? So we identified or had over 2,600 2, steps completed by the business during that uh, closing period. Um, Finance people are by nature very pragmatic. They like things to work in a very particular way. Uh, and they're also very careful, which means a lot of the repetitive tasks were actually, we found as part of this process, unnecessary. Um, we were doing work that we didn't need to do. That was flushed out through this process. Um, come on to the next slide, please. So how did we achieve this? Well, we, we, we basically had to map exactly what we had. How are we doing things now? And this included um, substantial investment in outsourced steps. A lot of the transactional stuff we'd actually pushed out to our uh, business process outsource company. Um, and what that meant was that we had to, well, they don't act unless they've got a very direct instruction from the business because they're a third party which meant there was a dependency if there was an issue or a timing problem or whatever it might be, they always had to come back to the business to check to say, can they move to the next step, et cetera. Um, and we, we had to run 
obviously our period end uh, through the subledges, reconcile the, the usual process. So if you just go on after wind rots. So basically the next steps took us all the way through and refined and cleaned up all of that exercise. Now, this journey, it's important, well, it's important, I think, to state, um, we believe we um, chose very well with uh, Winfo uh, because the team that helped us develop this were way more than technical people. They were technical people who, who helped us deliver this, but they understood business, um, which meant that the technical team could actually talk to our users directly because they actually understood the business process that they were going through. And that shortened the questioning time. So instead of having to go through uh, the new farm uh, IT team, here's a question, what does that mean? Well, what they're asking is this and interpreting it and cross-referencing it and, and translating the conversation. We didn't need to do that on this occasion. Um, certainly, uh, the, the, and the team that worked with us anyway, were absolutely committed to delivering this project uh, in, in, in the time that was uh, allocated. So they worked long hours whilst we were getting this, as did we, uh, to be fair, where required. But overall, it progressed exceptionally quickly. Um, if you could just go to the next slide. So what achievements did we get? Over 2,600 manual steps automated. And I can't tell you how beneficial that is to us as a company. Um, it reduced by literally 90% the time taken to, to complete our month end. Um, we learned a lot. So it's quite a concept. Could you take a team of people who are trying to do, they're, they're trying to complete a month end in man hours, if you want to call it that. So a person can sit there and think, my God, I've got to work 15, 16, 17 hours today to get through this month end uh, closure period. Um, it, it's quite a jump to remember that the robot can work 24 hours, seven days a week. So it can be doing things while you're in bed. Uh, if you basically let it know and program it through. And it seems a simple and obvious thing, but it actually isn't when you actually start to look, uh, start to work your way through it. You then have to have the confidence for the person who does that now. So I have to do this. I have to be up all night. I have to check it at three o'clock or whatever they're doing. And say, no, 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 no. You don't have to worry. The robot will do it. Uh, and that because of obviously it's the finance, the month end. They're very, very nervous of trusting you that that would actually happen. Um, and the the command center approach um, made it very, very easy for our teams to see and observe and understand what was happening all the way through. So it, in fact, the comment that come back is, you know, why can't Oracle be like this rather than just this bit? Um, that, that's, that, was the, um, that was the pleasure that came out of it. Um, so error reduction. So why did we get error reduction so much? Um, oddly enough, many mistakes are made because people misinterpret the information that they, they're finding or seeing in reports or, or whatever. The robot doesn't interpret. It's either right or wrong. So it operates and presents the information as correct or needs work doing to it. You don't have to go in and assess whether it, you need to do anything or not. The robot does that because it's, it's we can set parameters to check it. Um, is there a next slide? Uh, it's questions and answers. So, yeah. yeah so for me, uh, I mean, what we're saying is that the, the another advantage I'd just like to point out on there is the the, the robots that we've done that with um, present another opportunity. We brought it in specifically for uh, month end closing. So the emphasis on the word there is month end. So our robot is util our robots, we've got two of them, but they, they are utilized basically for that week and a bit. The rest of the time, currently, they're standing idle. 
So you can guess what our business is now looking at is how could we utilize that time? Because we're already, that, that's paid for. We only need to actually use it. Um, so we're looking at uh, the supplier onboarding. We're looking at uh, invoice processing. Uh, we're looking at uh, supply, uh, employee onboarding. We've got a whole raft of things that we want to put through this that can be run outside of the month end processing period. Um, so we expect significant benefits to come through from there as well. Um, and from my point of view, I'd just like to say thank you to the Winfo and the team, particularly the team who delivered this uh, because they were exceptional. So thank you. Thanks, Damien. Thank you. Damien, so thank you very much. That's that that's brilliant. And and some great takeaways from that in terms of um, you know, the amount of manual steps reduced clearly across a lot of countries, time reduced, reduction in errors, which was very interesting to hear your points on that across 36 ledgers. So some really great takeaways. And thank you so much for uh, you know giving us that very concise uh, um, discussion or, 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 or statements on, on your experiences with um, Winfo bots and, and Winfo. Um, so there, there are... Uh, a few questions uh, and also I'd like to then open it up to, 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 to the floor to, uh, so that whilst we have Damien and, and Dinesh on the line we can uh, uh, ask them some questions so um, there's a couple that have come through which uh, firstly just to, to Dinesh I think um, well to, to, to both of Damien feel, feel free to pitch in as well so uh, are the are, are the these bots this is the question, standard for all companies. So I guess, what, what if a company has different configuration or customizations in Oracle? Yeah, so I can answer that, John. So in terms of uh, the process, what we have done is that we have done the heavy lifting in terms of defining the processes using the board. So you've got a front end, you've got uh, the, uh, the obviously your ERP uh, through which the transactions are going to be processed is your uh, target system. Uh, and what the robots will do is obviously whatever instructions you pass through will perform on your target system. While we have done the heavy lifting in terms of defining the process as such, we do understand that the clients will have certain environments which are very specific to them. You could have a, a specific aspect of uh, application which could be customized in your in, uh, in instance as such. And that's where we come in, in terms of you know bringing our product and as a one-time setup, we will work along with you in making sure that other robots will work within your configuration, within your environment as such. So when we deploy these particular robots, it's not um, it's not that we just leave it up to you. We will work along with you. We will uh, set up the infrastructure along with you. We'll enable these particular robots. We'll identify the processes which you're looking at, and we will configure the environments to work within your um, ERP assets. So if, for example, if you are looking at month and close, and if you have created any specific custom reports, so as part of configuration, we can add your custom reports and select what the parameter values are required to be processed uh, into the application. And then uh, we uh, run through a cycle of testing along with you, and then uh, you go ahead and uh, deploy them into production. Yeah, no, thank you, Dinesh. That that that's great. And I, I think you've gone part way to asking the, the next question, but just for fullness, um, which is how are the bots managed, which I think you sort of covered there. Uh as occasionally, um, due to system updates, the uh, this person's bots uh, fail. Um, so I guess the question is how, how do you deal with, with system updates um and changes? Yep. A few things uh, over here uh, as such, right? See, the failure can hap happen on account of various activities uh, is number one. When you execute a specific process which has been scheduled, and as I mentioned, you got a full log in terms of what that particular process is doing. So for example, if you take month end, in case of Damien, what he mentioned, where you got a weekday minus five process, which is kickstarted. And if it runs step one, two, three, four, five, it fails at step six, for example, because maybe certain things have changed in the target application, the bot will send you a notification. The way we have configured it is that at every point of failure, when the bot is not able to go ahead and perform a next set of action, you will get a notification. 
and which means that you will have two courses of action. A, correct your target application with the underlying uh, 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 aspect, which could be that the bot uh, uh, as a robot does not have access to perform that particular function anymore, which means that you just need to enable it and restart your process. Or B, that it also allows you, if based on the time which it takes, you to perform this particular action manually and come back and notify in our dashboard lot saying that this action has been performed a robot to now go and perform the next step as such. So you have the full monitoring log where it allows you to um, switch over, take control at in all points of time based on alerts which the robot sends to you. And in if terms could, of system updates when the system comes, yes, Damon, please. I was only going to add there just to, to comment on that dashboard. Um, for, for our accounting team, um, where before the bots, they literally were running the reports or obtaining the reports from our third parties uh, to, to, to progress forward. They literally now sit and watch or can sit and watch the dashboard and it just runs and runs and runs and runs and then a red one comes up. Then they know they have to do something. Up until that point, they can be getting on with other work. and it's uh, I can't un, um, undersell, for want of a better word, how uh, how much they've welcomed this as a development, um, because they're financial people, they're intelligent people. Asking them to do repetitive, boring steps that are actually critical, that they really shouldn't have to do in the twenty first century, was such a blessing to them, and it, it actually feels more professional to sit there and say. Now the system's telling me when there's a problem, not me having to go in and find the problem. Um, and, and that has been a big um, USP, if you like, um, for, for, for this process, for our business. So, Brilliant. No, th th thanks, Damon. And j j just to finish off on that, j just to ensure that we've answered this, because uh, th there's been another uh, one put in there. Uh, if it fails, do you fix the bot or do, does the customer have the staff that knows how to do this? No, as part of the managed service as such, uh, for all these particular info bots, we provide the application support as well. So we will Perfect. monitor it and we will provide the fixes as well when the bot falls over. Okay, th thanks, Tanesh. That's great. So we've got a hand up from Srinivas. Um, I think we've enabled you to speak, uh, Srinivas. So if you would like to ask your question, we'd appreciate that. Thanks. Hey, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks, uh, Dinesh and John. See, I don't have a question. I want to comment. I would have known this like four years back or five years back. I don't know um, how, how much, when you started this business or activity. So we implemented RPA using UiPath like a six years back. Our journey is a rough journey initially because uh, I wish I would have, have the pre-built model. So I would have get return on investment immediately or convincing the leadership very easily. So we did, it, it is a big journey, you know? So, but if pre-build is there, and we can showcase, convince the leadership and buy it and use it and quick win, right? So I think it was my dream, the great work, man. Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks, Rosa. Now, I think we come from that particular point of view that you know when you look at an RPA and you want to kickstart a journey, you know, there are a lot of hardships in terms of you know infrastructure, application, business process, and then trying to build it and trying to sell it to both from an IT and a business. It's a, sometimes it becomes too much of a hard sell. And because you don't have pre-packaged, then that means you know, every time you think about a new process, you have to go to the same journey as such. So that's where I think we thought, how can we make that particular journey more seamless by uh, bringing pre-packaged automations and based on our accounting experience, based on our ERP implementation experience, we, we, we came up with uh, pre-packaged automations to help a lot of our customers. Yes. That, that, that's great. And thank you very much, Srinivas, for your input there. That's uh, very good. Um, could, could you tell me, uh, uh, D D Dinesh, uh, another question, which is, how easy is this to implement and get access to? So it's a SaaS-based model. Um, if, we, if we were to take it uh, on, how, how, how would we get access to uh, WinfoBots? 
Yeah, so John, uh, this is pretty straightforward. As we as this is a SaaS based product, we can uh, quickly provision an environment. We are happy to do a, a proof of concept or a pilot with yourself as well if you want to pick up a specific process based on our predefined list of processes. Uh, we will uh, work along with you. We just need access to your environments and certain variables uh, such as, you know, uh, if you would like a, not uh, a notification and alerts to be set up, then a specific uh, email ID for a bot and a uh, user account access for the bot uh, so that you, the bot can perform actions on your uh, target application, which will be your ERP. It could be Oracle eBusiness Suite or Oracle ERP Cloud as such. Uh, uh, and our product is compatible with both of them, whether you are on an Oracle eBusiness Suite customer or an ERP Cloud customer, our product will work for both of you. So we just need few details, which you can get it very quickly started. Uh, starting an, onboard, an onboarding process is a week's time uh, uh, rather than months of time as such, uh, because we just need to provision an uh, environment, spin it up, and uh, you can configure to your environment and start working. Brilliant. And all yeah. of the other things which I mentioned, we can also demonstrate on a vision environment generically if you want to do a proof of concept uh, along with us. That's great. Thank you, Dinesh. That that's really useful. And and Damien, uh, while we've got we've got you on the line, what would you have done differently uh with what you know now, going back to the beginning of of your project? If I could ask that question, does that uh, uh I think or is there anything you'd do differently? <laughs> there is. Uh, what we would, well, the first thing I would do differently is um, we, we let me start with our uh, when we started exploring the market to find a partner to bring this in. Um, most of the partners that we talked to in the first place were much bigger names than yours in terms of the industry. Um, and we were shocked in truth, to find um, that they don't offer the pre-built things, or if they have anything that resembles pre-built, it's nowhere near as developed as yours. Uh, they couldn't demonstrate an understanding of Oracle the way your team could, um, and that worried us. And the lead times from the other companies to even start talking to us were so far out as to be unrealistic from where we were. Um, so I think you're so agile, what the pre-built stuff that you've done, I think that's been a, a masterstroke, to be honest, um, because, because you've done that, then you've already asked most of the questions and produced near enough an answer before we even think about the question. Um, and better than that, you can actually demonstrate it you can show us um, and, and anybody else. And that makes a big, big difference in terms of the confidence. Because I have to say, there is the, the, certainly the senior management were very, very nervous of bringing in a third party to do, uh, to, to bring uh, robots on. Because after all, we, we've had the, we've employed people we know and trust to, you know, deliver the job month in, month out, month in, month out, through all the sweat and toil that they do. And what we're saying is we're going to bring a robot in to do that. Um, and the senior management, that's a very nerve-wracking decision to make at senior level, because if it goes wrong, uh, you, it's not just the project, it's the teams. How many people will you lose? Key people would you lose if you were getting it wrong? Um, and we had the complete opposite. I mean, literally... It was uh, a breath of fresh air for us. So for me, what would I do different? I would, I would have started a lot earlier if we'd have come across it <laughs> in our journey. We, we went on to ERP, uh, Oracle ERP in 2017. We'd have started a lot earlier because each of those countries, it's a nightmare uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to keep them all running um, uh, effectively. And... But the frustration we've got at the moment is that we now we've got this, we've got so many other opportunities um, that we don't have the teams to actually get onto it quick enough to bring your, even with the demos, we, we, we've got other commitments that we need to get out of the way first before we can get in. And that's what we're looking at. But that's what I would have done different, started earlier. Yeah. So, 
Brilliant. No, that that that's great, Damien. That that really comes. I mean, I, I certainly took the point earlier around, uh, you know, uh, understanding the business, understanding the business process being really key. And I think what we really try to re- bring to bear is that experience, um, you know, with Oracle around what should be automated and and what shouldn't be automated, perhaps. So um, that's really good. Um, just one more thing. Uh, there was a question around um, uh, the other modules uh, that have pre-recorded demos. Yes, we do, we do have a number of them, other than just the cash management, I believe. Um, Dinesh, is, is that That's right. You've got yeah. 40 plus processes which are uh, uh, pre-built from an automation perspective. So if you are looking for a process which could be uh, for based on the size of uh, scale of your organizations, for example, uh, we're speaking with one of the organizations, which is a large uh, global organization, which does a lot of user onboarding, which means on a day-to-day basis, there are 30, 40 users which are required to be created. We are working along with them. Uh, they're using our automation, plugging in it, our automation to uh, do the user access management. We are speaking with another organization, which do a large number of journals as well, uh, GL journals on a month, you know, monthly basis because they got various ledgers, which are uh, internally to Oracle. Plus, they've also got external uh, financial accounting systems, which sends across the journals as well. So we've got uh, working along with them. So the journals are sent to a robot. Robot picks up those journals and creates them within Oracle as well. So uh, we, we also are with another company where we do the... Uh, across 50 odd asset books a financial month and as well closing out all the financial uh, fixed assets for uh, a specific book and various other customers use them as well so we've got quite a few use cases and we've got, as i mentioned we've got 40 plus uh, automations uh, across erp uh, different functions brilliant. brilliant thank you dinesh um we're out of time we're just a minute over actually so i i think that we're going to conclude the webinar now i'd really like to thank damien and Dinesh, very much indeed, for um, your participation. It's it's greatly appreciated. Uh, it's always great to hear what a cu- what a real customer uh, story is, and and as I say, that's that's really important. So thank you, Damien. Really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank you all for attending, and thank you very much for the questions that have come through, uh, which have been really good. So there will be. Uh, an email coming to you all with uh, a recording of this webinar so you can refer back to it. Uh, There'll be some links to some content. Uh, If you would like to have a more in-depth discussion about specific processes or automation uh, in your business, um, please reach out to us. We can organize uh, a call, um, a further demo, et cetera, and look at that for you. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to thank you all very much indeed and close down the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Cheerio. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.